Good morning and welcome. It's good to, to see each of you here this morning. Full order of service uh, for Holy Communion on page 203 and, and following the insert. Um, I used to mark my place in the liturgy, but before we go any farther, let's just rise and take a moment to greet each other. God's grace and peace. <clears throat> Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. He who died is alive with us in this time of worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ lives among us. Let us rejoice. And because our Lord Jesus Christ is here with us, we know that he hears our prayers, grants us what is best and right, and so we bring before him confession of who we are and need for his help. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us First, consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. The good news is that Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins, as a called and ordained servant of the Word. And by his authority, I forgive you all your sin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us remain standing as we join in our entrance hymn, 480.
The Lord be with you. you. Let us pray together the colic. O God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people rescue from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal glories. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we turn our attention to God's word for us this morning. <clears throat> our first New Testament reading from Acts chapter 3, beginning at verse 12. After healing a man who had been crippled from birth, a crowd gathered. When Peter saw this, he said to the people, Fellow Israelites, why are you wondering about this, and why are you staring at us as if by our own power or godliness we made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you betrayed and rejected in the presence of Pilate, even though Pilate had decided to let Jesus go. You rejected the holy and righteous Jesus, and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the source of life, whom God raised from the dead. We are witnesses to that. It is, Je- it is Jesus' name, that is, by faith in his name, that he has healed this man whom you see and know. Yes, the faith that comes through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance like your leaders. 
This is how God fulfilled what he had predicted through the voice of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Therefore, repent and turn to Jesus to have your sins blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and so that he may send you Jesus, the Christ whom he appointed long ago. Heaven must receive Jesus until the time of universal restoration that God announced long ago through the voice of his holy prophets. This is the word of the Lord. Our second New Testament reading <clears throat> from the Apostle John's first letter, chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given us and letting us be called God's children. And that is what we are. For this reason, the world does not recognize us because it did not recognize Jesus either. Dear friends, we are now God's children. But what we will be like has not been revealed yet. We know that when Christ is revealed, we will be like him because we will see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope based on Jesus keeps himself pure, just as Jesus is pure. Everyone who keeps living in sin also practices disobedience. In fact, sin is disobedience. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and there is not any sin in him. No one who remains in him goes on sinning. The one who does, the one who goes on sinning, hasn't seen him or known him. Little children, don't let anyone deceive you. The person who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Let us rise in anticipation of that great day. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Well, they were still talking about the report from the Emmaus Road disciples of how Jesus had appeared alive to them. Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified, thinking they were seeing a ghost. Jesus said to them, Why are you frightened? And why are doubts arising in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, for it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost doesn't have flesh and bones as you see I have. After Jesus had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they still could not believe it for joy and were full of amazement, Jesus said to them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and Jesus took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are the very words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms, had to be fulfilled. Then Jesus opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ was to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name, to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am sending on you what my Father promised. 
but stay here in the city until you've been clothed with power from on high. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord. And for all that our Christ has done for us, let us confess our common faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of the light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under the conscious heaven. He suffered and he was buried. On the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with our hymn of the day, 474. <clears throat> Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our living Lord Jesus Christ. May the words that he brings to you this day fill you with strength and courage to live for him. Amen. 
touching God. Touching God. Many people want to have an experience to be touched by God. To know that he, he cares for them. That he'll help them in their distress. That he's real. That he's alive. People want to touch God. How often have you wished you could see or touch God? When things are going backwards, when things are being overwhelming you, where have you wanted that? Probably more often than we would care to admit. We know the promises, we know the scriptures, we, we know what we should do and ought to do, but we start to wonder, <clears throat> or worse yet, we start to doubt and just go ahead as if, well, maybe he's left us to figure it all by ourselves. Touching God. How often have you wanted to be able to touch God or be touched by God? According to the Holy Spirit's inspiration of the Apostle Paul, this is how God works in the world. That he wants people to search for him. Reach out. Touch him. Acts 17, verses 24 to 27, quote, the God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands and he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, God himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out for their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. Just pause for a second. So all of history, all of national boundaries, right? And he marked out their appointed times in histories and the boundaries of their lands. We could do a whole other sermon on war and politics and all the goofiness that seems to skip right by this. I'll skip by it right now. The verse that counts or, or for this sermon, verse 27. God did this so that they would seek him in the hope that they might feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is not actually far from any one of us. The phrase that they should feel their way toward him, that one verb is the same verb that's in our text. When Jesus says, touch me and see. Touch me. Verify by handling me. Handle me, right? Sometimes I'll translate it, grab hold of me. But touch and see. Right? You see, your seeking God is met with God allowing you to get the answers to your prayers by, quote, working out your salvation with fear and trembling. Philippians 2.12. This is done by God allowing us to touch him, verify by handling his promises. In our sermon text, the disciples are confused by the death of the God-man. That's not, even though he told them, they just didn't understand that that could ever happen for a number of reasons. And now there's this re these reports that Christ is risen. But they couldn't say the indeed part just yet. They were confused and bewildered. And then there's the fear of what the Jewish leadership might do to them. Right? They're meeting behind locked doors. To confused and Believers, wondering if Christ is alive. 
Just like often we wonder, if he's alive, why is he not helping us? Jesus says to them, look at my hands and my feet. It's I myself. Touch me, right? Verify by handling me. Touch me and see. A ghost doesn't have flesh and bones, as you see, I have. This having touched, having verified by handling, the risen Lord Jesus changed the apostles. The Apostle John, in his first letter, verse 1, says, That which was from the beginning, that which we heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at, and our hands have handled. This we proclaim concerning the word of life. This morning, I want us to to look a little deeper into the significance of Jesus' words when he says, look at my hands and my feet, for it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. And the first and obvious meaning of the text is that Jesus rose physically from the dead. Okay, that might not be surprising news to you folk who've been Christian all your life, <laughs> but it bears repeating, Jesus rose physically from the dead. That is, he is not a ghost. To disciples who are fearful, he says, quote, who were startled and terrified thinking they were seeing a ghost, he says, why are you frightened? Why are doubts arising in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. It's I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost doesn't have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And after this, Jesus showed them his hands and feet. Have you ever seen a ghost with feet? That's not normally the way things are pictured in any Christian or pagan literature. Just look at Casper. Okay, maybe the comic strip is not the most reliable source here. Right? But, but the, the idea of having feet is not normally how we see apparitions moving. The text. Well, they still could not believe this for joy and were full of amazement, Jesus said to them, Do you have here anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. I know I'm dating myself a little bit. Um, as a young kid, on Saturday morning, we used to be able to watch the Abbott and Costello movies. And in this one particular episode, I remember Abbott is shot by some gangsters, but Abbott, and Abbott dies, and he comes back as a ghost, but he, he doesn't realize that he died and is a ghost, and he starts eating and drinking, and in true Abbott Costello fashion, water starts sputing out all, all the bullet holes. As a kid, that was hilarious. The point. Jesus is risen from the dead alive, real, able to help the fearful, searching, worried disciples. And he eats in their presence. And it doesn't fall on the floor. Because he's not a ghost, he has flesh and bone. The significance of all of this is that you too will be raised to life again with flesh and bone, bodies freed from sins and imperfections and fully controlled by the Spirit of God. That's what Jesus' death for your sins has won for you. The Apostle Paul writes, <clears throat> but someone will ask, how are the dead raised? What kind of bodies will they have? The body that is buried is perishable. It is raised imperishable. It is buried in dishonor. It's raised in glory. It's buried in weakness. It's raised in power. Just as we have borne the image of the earthly man, Adam, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man, Jesus. That's 1 Corinthians 15, verses 35 and following. 
What will our resurrected bodies be like? Well, it'll be a, quote, imperishable, glory-filled, powerful, immortal, that's verse 53, flesh and bone body filled with God's spirit, verse 44, bearing, quote, the image of God. Or as Jesus says in the text to his disciples, look at my hands and my feet. It's I myself. Handle me and see. A ghost doesn't have flesh and bones as you see I have. Now none of this is new to us. No surprise, I get that. But what is the teaching of our age? Many Christian leaders, many congregations, many people, Teach, believe, when we die, we ascend to something greater, a, a purified spirit. That's Hinduism. It's not Christianity. And it's not, most certainly, what we just read or what Jesus said. And some of the ramifications of this change in Christian belief is that the body is devalued in our modern culture. It's seen in our modern burial practices and funerals. It's seen in medical assistance in dying. It's seen in a sexual movement which does not use God's gift of a flesh and bone body in the way God designed for it to be used. And while many disciples yet today could not believe this, Jesus says also to us today, these are the very words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms had to be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the Scriptures. While we struggle today to accept the teaching, the full impact of what it means for God to come in human flesh and blood, to live as one of us, to die for our sin, our doubts, our fears, our struggles. As we struggle to understand that, he still did it. And the Father accepted it for his raised life. And the promise that God will use the struggles in our life as a way for us to to reach out and try to handle, touch his promises and, and see that they're true, that's still the ongoing way the Christian faith grows and works. Part of the question would be then, have you given up on that struggle and treat Christ as if he's dead and just a ghost? Or as people who believe that he died and rose again, do we try to handle those promises, the words that he gives us, and, and allow him to shape us, move us, strengthen us? Look at my hands and feet. Touch me. Verify by handling me and see that a ghost doesn't have flesh and bones as you see I have. Now you may be thinking to yourself, all right, Pastor Dan, fine, whatever. But that was 2,000 years ago. We're living here today. How am I supposed to really touch God, Jesus, or be touched by him? Fair question. One last set of scriptures. The Apostle John, in chapter 4, verses 2 and 3 says, this is how we can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit, so we might understand there, every um, spiritual impulse leading a prophet. This is how we can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. This is the Antichrist you heard is coming and even now is in the world. If you check your Bible translators, 
on 1 John 4, 2 and 3. It gets translated different ways. Specifically, that Christ has come in the flesh, or Christ comes in the flesh, or Christ is in the flesh. Why? When talking about the past in the Greek language, you can talk about something that happened once in the past, and that's one way you spell the, spell the verb. I was born in 1965, February 20th. I was born once. It happened once in the past. Okay. But if you were going to talk about something that happened in the past and continues on into the present, you spell the verb a different way. So, I am alive. Present tense. But I've been alive since, well, actually before February 20th, 1965, whenever I was conceived, and I haven't tried to figure that one out. really don't want to get the picture in my head. The, the <clears throat> if you're going to talk about how long or when did I become alive, you'd spell it a different way. Because I've been alive that whole time. You with me? Two different ways of spelling the verb. So how do you put it into English? Is it has come in the f flesh? That sounds like it ended in the past. Is it is, like it's only happening now? No. God, who is in Jesus Christ, God and man with a human soul and a human body, has come, is still coming in this world. Ah. So when we say at the beginning of the service, that Christ is with us in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we mean that the God-man, Jesus Christ, is here. And when we, when we go to the altar to receive Holy Communion, he's really there. Not just as a ghost, not just as a spirit, but the God-man, Jesus Christ, is there. And when he says, take and eat, this is my body, yep, he is still coming, because he has come. You're touched by God. Where's the prayers? Where's the struggles? Where's the doubts? Ah, Christ has come, is still coming, is still saying to you, handle me, handle my promises. When you kneel there and pray, know that we have fellowship one an with one another because the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. 1 John 1, 7. Everybody wants a religious experience. Something to prove that it's real. Usually when we're struggling the most, our eyes are closed. That was the apostles. They were afraid. Where are you struggling? For God is here with you. Handle me and see. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us rise as we bring before our God all our prayers and petitions <clears throat> for this day. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you that through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, through the power of who you are and the grace that you extend through him, you are not far from any one of us, as you've said in your word in Acts 17. In our times of doubt, in our times of fear, enable us to trust in you, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. To that end, O oh Lord, we pray that you might use your word, yes, this holy meal, yes, as a way to touch us and assure us of your living presence. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. 
be with each of us, not only in our daily struggles, but enable us to be light in this dark world. Enable us to encourage others. Help others seek and reach out. Enable us to proclaim your goodness, for that is the only power that pulls them forward. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. To that end, O oh Lord, we ask your grace to be upon all parents, upon all missionaries, all clergy, all parents. Continue to raise up, O oh Lord, workers for your harvest field. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, we especially pray for all our teachers, schools, and students, and seminaries, that the truth of your word might go forth, that any false idea be left ununderstood. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. we pray for all our government leaders at every level, that you grant them wisdom. That whether they call on you or not, that they would see the truth that is there in creation. That they would see the truth that there is something, someone, you, we would confess, that is bigger and greater. So that they issue good laws that are helpful for justice, for righteousness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray, O oh Lord, for all places where there is war, where conflicts are breaking out, for the evil desires of sinful people to be foiled, for the innocent to be protected, and for your faithful servants to proclaim the hope that we have in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, we bring before you all those who are on our hearts, family and friends that have various illnesses, that are struggling with various relationships. Touch them. Encourage them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For gracious Lord, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for us, in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, one God with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death, that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation. For you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet, in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ, Grant us now your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So that you might have in you this day and in all your life. The living God, in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way, also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Heavenly Father, accept this token of our love and appreciation. Fill us and use us as your servants in your kingdom as we present ourselves to you. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with the distribution of our Lord's body and blood. For the precious body and blood of our living Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Fill you, body and soul, with his forgiveness and grace, his joy and peace as he keeps you alive in him. With the life of the last.
precious body and blood of our living Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, fill you again, body and soul, with his forgiveness and grace, his life, and the life everlasting. Let us, <clears throat> let us rise and pray. The post-communion collect. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that in the day of his coming, we may, together with all the saints, Celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Let us remain standing as we join in our closing hymn, 463.
Thank you, Mark. Thank you, John and Lori and Paul and Alita and all of those 